Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Keep a song in your heart. It's time for a conversation at River's Edge. Brought to you by River's Edge Productions and recorded at Trumbull Hill Studios. Hosted by Dwayne Marshall. Holiday Hoobie Waddy. Gosh, we're all really impressed down here, I can tell you. That don't make no sense. Today's spotlight artist is guitarist, singer, and songwriter, Jerry Foster. <laughs> Here with my buddy, Jerry Foster. Man, it is good to see you, buddy. Thanks, it's good to see you. Wait a minute. A lot has happened since we've seen each other, and originally decided to have Jerry down yesterday with his lovely wife, and that plan changed, and uh, so we, got, we could we catch the, up on our personal stuff. We got the boss today, though. Very opinionated young man. Who is? Who do we have here? This would be the warden. How you doing, buddy? This is Mr. Aaron. That's my boy. <laughs> This is Aaron, He's, and uh, Jerry's married, hadn't been married very long, nope. uh, and she couldn't come today, but Christy, uh, just a very sweet lady, and I know you're very happy right now, and it's just good to have you on, and it's good to see you again. We just got momentum going with uh, the Rank Outsiders band, <laughs> and uh, all this stuff happened. I'm not going to spend time talking about the bad things, but... no. It affects there, there is one good thing that always comes out of <clears throat> stuff like this, though, is um, I had a month and a half of just getting to be with this guy. Where I want to start with you today, Jerry. Yeah. And I have, like, I'm going to have to uh, be real careful because I know the answers to some of these questions. That's okay. I'm not answering for you, but... Don't give me softballs. I really want people to, to hear your story, you know. Uh, you have an amazing story. In, uh, I think of people... People that approach things, and not just alcoholisms or addictions, but mm -hmm. life, you mm -hmm. know, the way that you do. Uh, man, I, I think, you know, it's a philosophy not just for overcoming what is haunting you, but uh -huh. it, you know, what is stopping you. Yeah. What is stopping you from progress. And, um, you know, sure. I don't have to tell you what you meant to me. You, you know that, and I've thanked you a hundred times, it's just, which isn't good enough. But, uh, you know, people need to hear you, and that's sure. one of the main things. We're going to talk about music mostly, but we do want to cover that part of it. But yeah, like, what what would you like to know? Like, how how long was I an active alcoholic? Well, let's start here. Sure. This is what I'm interested in, and I've never asked you this before. Go for it. Give me mm -hmm. your first musical memory. My first musical Your memory? Your first musical memory, the thing that pops out of you when you're small. There's a, there's a few things. Being about three, and uh, I was raised in a home that went to church, and right. my mother and father both played. So there's always that. But the I remember the first record that made me go, ooh, I like music, was, um, and you're going to laugh, but uh, I guess I was about four. My parents brought home this, this album. It was Muhammad Ali versus Mr. Tooth Decay. And the very first song, <laughs> the very first song on this album, dude, I memorized the lyrics, and I remember hearing the horns and the harmonies and the vocals, right? And it just it gripped me, man. I was Are like, you I want to do that. Muhammad Ali singing? No, not okay. his singing. Uh, although he did sing on it, it, it wasn't very good. He just, uh, I'm trying to picture that. Yeah, you got to stick to boxing. in the Liberty Bell. Ali, Ali. Who really gave that bell a smack? Ali. Who punched it so hard that the bell did crack? Hit it so hard with an awful whack. Ali. But that's funny. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, versus did, Mr. Tooth Decay. Okay. But you did mention, you know, and we've talked about it a little bit, your mother... Yeah. He was a piano player. Yeah, and my dad played guitar. Is she still playing church? Absolutely. Yeah. She's married to a minister. 
Man, that sounds vaguely familiar. And my mom <laughs> pecked around on piano, but, you know, kept from a musical, musical family, too. Yeah. yeah. See, Did my you? grandfather was also a minister. So, oh, oh really? I so, and my grandmother, that. and I, God bless her for being my grandmother because she could play anything she put her hands on, and I got lucky and inherited that out of all of the grandchildren. Right. I am literally the only musical grandchild, and there's like a bunch of us. Really? And I was the only one, so I had that bond with my grandma. So during church service, my grandmother would play piano, then maybe play some accordion, uh, play guitar, mandolin. Oh. I've, I've actually got her first violin that she got when she was like six, and I've got her lap steel. She played a Hawaiian lap steel. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she was a really, really neat lady. How cool is that? Couldn't sing a lick, man. She tried. God bless her. Really? It still had well, good rhythm? She had that old 20s kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. sort of vaudeville-ish, yeah. I don't know why you'd call it. But yeah. And, you know, there's people that are like that that can't hit a lick vocally. Like a play. That has, that like they got to play. And just have the mind for melody yeah. and everything else. It's like, how, do, how does How can work? you not sing? But right. It, even if you can sing, there's also still the... You can sing on key and still not be a good singer. That would be me. Yeah. I can sing on key very well. I don't have the greatest vocal tone. Yeah. That's why I love to sing harmonies. And I always, whenever I record myself, when I'm recording by myself, will always stack a billion harmonies. I don't like the sound of my voice. But I'm okay with that because I'm in good company. John Lennon didn't like his voice. You know, most people don't. Most singers. And, and I'm, o- I'm okay with... Are the worst critics. Yeah. That, that, that's, you know, that keeps you humble. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people that aren't that way. They're really, really proud of their voice. But yeah. if I, I, there's very few things that I record that I'm ever happy with. Really yeah, happy I don't know with. if anybody ever feels like they've completed yeah. anything they've recorded. And now that I'm, you know, doing my own recording, yeah, I, I, it takes me so long enough to feel like I don't. I'm to start over. Let me ask you this: When uh, did you ever? Did you have a piano in your house when you were growing up? No. Not until I was about 14, 15. Okay. So you never got, uh, did the family around the piano and on the holidays? Well, we had, we had access to church. Right. So we'd go to church and do it. Okay. So I mean, just good. like as an outing, you'd go to your family, would go to church and gather yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, because they had a key to the church. So yeah. we would, we'd go and, yeah, in fact, my first recording, I'm about three and I'm singing it's my mom and a friend and my dad and right. all of us kids. And I was singing uh, Let the Sun Shine In. Oh, Let the Sun yeah. Shine In. And touring that city. Yeah. Some morning you'll find oh, yeah. touring that city. Yeah. Well, that, was that, uh, I think that's the Goodmans. Yeah, I, think that's a, that may I think be a that's Goodman a happy Goodman vestal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A very yeah. iconic voice. Well, I, I wondered about that. Yeah, I used to do that when I was little. We, and then uh-huh. as we got older, of course, you know, we were too cool for that. It didn't happen much. Absolutely. But I it usually like when it went down to my grandma and grandpa's, that's when it happened. And we did the same thing. She didn't have a, grandma didn't have a piano. But yeah. we'd go to the church and we'd sit around and, and sing. And everybody in that, on my dad's side, they're musical. Uh-huh. You know, it, he has a sister's recording artist. But that's like. That was my first memories of sure. music was those times. Yeah. And I just... I think for a lot of people that is in this area... Right. Um, uh, I mean, look at all the people that... Blues artists, soul singers. Yeah. Uh, Sam Cooke, man, that gospel group he was in before he was a solo act was amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody in the Temptations grew up down south before they went to Detroit and became the Temptations. They raised, you know, church right. music. I know Dennis Edwards... The guy that took David Ruffin's place definitely was. so. Whitney Houston. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Whitney Houston's mother, legendary gospel singer. All little the, Richard. All the great, greatest singers, in the my now opinion, late. Little Richard. are gospel singers. I want to say used to be. Then there's We also have a tendency to have a little gruff in our voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's so important, you know, the, the emotion you put in. And music, and with gospel music, you really learn that. And in southern gospel music, they call it putting a teardrop into your voice. You know, and you, sure. know, you know what that means immediately when you hear that. It's yeah. the emotion you put in your voice. Is some yep. people are really good at it. And but you and know, I still like that music to this day. I love it. Yeah. 
Well, let's talk about uh, musical projects. You, know, you were at ELB for long time, long ten time, years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, you you guys had gotten so tight, three piece band. And I remember, you know, probably hadn't been together that long the first time I heard you. And it, it, the one thing about you that always popped out is you're the, you're not the mainstream guy. You guys were doing stuff nobody was doing. Right. And he, you know. Uh, and I've been in bands like that where you do what you want to do, but people don't always, always accept that, you know, when they, right. they hear that. But can you find happiness doing that kind of thing, even though you're not the crowd? Packing not going in the crowd. Crazy. Right. Do you, would you rather pack in the crowd, have people going crazy because you're doing wild thing? Well, or, or would you rather have the satisfaction of doing a Beatles song and nailing it? It depends. It depends on my mood, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm not gonna lie. There's I, times. I, I, there's I, I times understand. we play a gig, and half the crowd would get it and right. love it, right. and the other crowd would just be like, "Play yeah. cocaine or yeah. give me three steps." It's like, sorry, we don't. We yeah. we have not worked it up. So you know, people <laughs> people can give you some of the best feedback. Or they can give you some of the worst feedback, but, thinking they're giving. But you now good listen, feedback. I want to say something here, and, and I think if anybody is in a cover band, needs to take notice of this. You are in there to please the crowd, not yourself. Right. So as I get older, and realize, hey man, if I want to come back and play here and get a paycheck, yeah, I probably ought to be thinking about what the what the audience wanted. wants oh, yeah. and not I mean, what Jerry wants. You, you have to have that. But you I'm glad we. I'm glad we did it. It was a great experience. Yeah. And we did it for a long time. Yeah. Did it for yeah, a long I mean, time. You guys were, I, what I was going with while ago is the first time I seen you, you guys, you know, we're good, but not really tight. But yeah. the, the last time I saw you, I'm like, it was a world of difference. And oh, sure. Like, you know, it went I think the together. first time you saw us, we were about a month into it. It was, I know exactly what it was. It was Hillbillies. It was, it was Hillbillies. It was a uh, benefit. Um, for, the, it, for bad bones, it was the no. It was a guitar player for uh, the metal band out of Cape. Uh, oh gosh, why can I? Think? I can't think of the name of the Time band. Time X Nasty, and, uh, you know. Maybe the, yeah. Name. That's where you saw us though. I remember that. Driving rain. Driving rain. That's it. Guitarist for driving rain. It, yeah. But that's that was the first time you saw. Yeah, we were like a month into it. So right. yeah, ten years later, if you saw us, we were. Well, it, was, it was. It was. We were tight. Mind drop. Because a three piece band, you know, it's it's different. It's a different world. Everybody has to be on. You have to be tight. You got, you know, yeah. or it's not. It just sounds like three guys playing instruments. It doesn't sound like a band, right? But and it was. You got to so know awesome. your role, and I'll tell you, uh, with the rank outsiders thing, having Dave on keys, yeah. is awesome. Oh because well, well, dude, I, I'm going to kidnap him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not only is it great because he is so amazing, right. I get to approach guitar different. Right. Yeah. Well, I see what you're I saying. Can, I can. I can. now play just little power chords, whereas right. I was trying to play big chords to fill up ELB. Yeah. Rhythm is a lot more than just the chords. Yeah. Rhythm is the yeah. feel, and that—that's the thing that Dave has, man. And I think we talked about awesome, it. He's awesome, man. And I, I'd never heard of the guy. Yeah. The Dave Busby, piano player, and he's from Dexter, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I play with a lot of musicians. And how does this guy get by me? And yeah. he's, he's he's got the chops. Yeah, he can play yeah. some chops, but what jumps out at me is what you're saying. He's so smooth and so it's and it's really awesome yeah. because we don't step on each other's toes. Right. We know our roles. Yep. And that no makes it there. no heck no, man. If I had my way, there's some nights I'm like, take another one, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, and he's like, man, you're making me do all the leads. Yeah. I'm like, all time band. Oh, that's that's easy. That's the Beatles. Yeah. And Muhammad Ali versus Mr. Tooth Decay. I, I love the Beatles. But <laughs> yeah, that's freaking awesome. I, I'm going to totally use that against you. No, the Beatles. Uh, oh, it, no, it, no, it, no. it's nothing to use against me. I wear that with pride. No, that's it's just funny. You know, it's, it's, so, great. it's like little tidbits, like you know, somebody that you've known is to find yeah. stuff. Out. It's it's funny, and yeah. I love it. But uh, okay, I, I love the Beatles too. Yep. But I have I, this running argument, and you're, you're, you're going to disagree with me, too. Everybody else does. Everyone disagrees with me on this, except for maybe a few people, especially Wayne Renninger. He's going to watch this. We got into an argument. Who is the greatest all-time American rock and roll band? 
Well, it can't be the Beatles. Well, so. I mean, uh, the greatest all time with, American rock and well, roll band. The greatest all time, oh, just rock and roll band. Would you call it? Would you say that's the Beatles? <sighs> I mean, the the, the Beatles made good rock for that time, but it's not. It's more like pop music. Right. It's pop rock. As far as rock and roll, like rock music. Yeah. I mean, Zeppelin comes to mind, obviously. Sabbath, The Stones. Right. Uh, All of those bands you're missing are pioneers in the, you know. Freak show. The, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Ernie uh, Lewis band. But I, uh, it, we got into an argument about it because I said, uh, my, I think the greatest rock and roll band of all time is uh, Aerosmith. I do. I, I, wrote, I would, I would so give them the greatest American rock band. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're just so iconic. But here's the thing. How many American rock bands can you name that were strictly all Americans? Not a whole There's lot. Look at Foreigner. Yeah, they had an American yeah. lead singer. Not, not a whole lot. Jimi Hendrix had English backing musicians. Uh, you know, Backstreet Boys. Uh, <laughs> it's a joke. But you're, you're right. That's universal language going on there. Yeah. But, you know, the Beatles, they just, you, know, you said they sound a lot like pop, but it was all new ground. What they, you know, what they were doing, they, influenced they, by different things. Influenced by but, the blues and everything. But who else. who has the Beatles not influenced? Oh no, uh, every, the, everybody. Because yeah. whether you know it or not, they've influenced you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Any it's, band that has ever tried to evolve and make their sound, it's the Beatles. Yeah. And yeah, the Beatles went from "I Want to Hold Your Hand" to "Sgt. Pepper" in three years. That's yeah. amazing. That's Elvis progress. Elvis Presley's the same way. You yeah, know, Elvis yeah. is influenced. He, uh, Chuck Berry. Yeah, like man, he should be like in the top five most influential guitarists of all time. Yeah, not a lot of chops for Chuck. Had but uh, a couple signature chops. Yeah, Ace Frehley is like yep. Chuck Berry. See, yeah. that's just shit. the names you mentioned are not the names that I mentioned. You know yeah. what I mean when it comes to that that kind of stuff, and that's fine. No, I'm just saying people that are true. influenced by Chuck Berry, yeah. he immediately and and Keith Richards immediately come to mind. Yeah, Keith Richards. Okay, well, let me Keith. ask you this one: most overrated band of all time, rock band of all time. Mm, possibly Zeppelin. You got to be careful when you get when possibly you go Zeppelin. You're gonna make people mad. I don't care. Z- how much? How Good. much? No. I, because there's no right or wrong answer. Oh. It's just an opinion. Yeah, and if, if you can't handle someone's opinion, grow up. Yeah. To me, it's the Rolling Stones. Could be the Rolling Stones for you. I mean, for me, it's Zeppelin because Zeppelin ripped off so many. Yeah, they didn't have too many before. original songs. Do you, no. I mean, yeah. Do the research. Yeah. They they ripped off a lot of people and and got the money. Most overrated, maybe. I mean. Who gets more attention than they? I mean, what what exactly is overrated? Well, anyway, you know, like, like by whose whose rating scale? Like, right. I would say, if you're looking at like album sales and made money and stuff like yeah, that, I don't, I don't or, look at that crap. Or are you looking if at? That, if I did that, I wouldn't like most of the people that I like. Or are you looking at what some critic who can't even play an instrument is rating? Yeah, like I mean, somebody that is hailed as like a great guitar player that you don't think is a great guitar player. Uh, Jerry Foster. No. I know you say that in an humble way. Nah, dude, I could teach you everything I know in five minutes. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Five you know, minutes. You've never seen me play guitar. I look like a... Fine. Uh, I'm not made for guitar. You, well, you know, I'm glad that you're humble in that you way. you got to be rated to be considered overrated <laughs> anyway. But I think that, yeah. <laughs> you got, I think that, you got to uh, be considered good to be overrated. I think that's kind of what we touched on a while ago, your, your own worst critic, that you have some... Really amazing chops, and you remind me of someone, uh, which is coming up to my. That was awesome because you led me into my next question. What's that? Who's the your biggest influence? Not talking about albums you listen to, just someone you take that. Uh, that's you easy. Have conversations that's easy. With. My best friend is actually my guitar hero, and that's Mark McFeeters. Yeah, I knew yeah. you were gonna say that. And I do get accused of sounding like him from time to time. You do and I'll sound ta- like him. Well, and I'll tell it's you something. It's almost spooky at, at, at times. I'll take it. But see, here's the, here's the thing, all right? You're going to think this is crazy because guitar is my main instrument. 
I can name on my hands my all of my guitar influences. Right. All of them. Literally all of my guitar influences. Because I never, until I met Mark, I didn't understand. I didn't. Uh, I didn't understand how guitarists became guitarists. Right. I just made melodies on my guitar, learned all the chords I could, learned all the Beatles songs I could. So obviously George Harrison, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Pete Anderson, who played for Dwight Yoakam, uh, Joe Walsh. Love Joe Walsh. And Love Joe Walsh. Uh, maybe just by osmosis, not even knowing it, or being influenced by people that were influenced by him, uh, Tommy Ione from yeah. Sabbath. Really? Without even knowing it. I wouldn't have known that until you told me that. Yeah. But <clears throat> my all-time favorite guitarist, literally, who I can sit and listen to play, is Mark McFeeters. Mine too. And I'm so lucky Other than because... Jeff. Because the guy... The, we're best friends. We, we are very much like family. He's one of those guys that we'll talk for hours on the phone and we always end it with, love you, brother. Yeah. As always, we we are very very close. If you listen, he'll teach you something every time you have a conversation. Well, here's the here's the cool <laughs> thing. Here's here's something cool that Mark can do that not a lot of people can do. Mark and I have very similar ideas, and we're both we both have a thing about the truth. We want the truth. Yeah. And if we think the other person has fallen for something that is not the truth, we'll check each other. Yeah. And I don't let everybody do that. Without it going in one ear and out he's, the other. He's universal on that. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you don't do it to strangers, but if you know him long enough, yeah, you if you do, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now that's that. That was my one of my greatest lessons in music was a moment that he did that to me. Yeah, you know, and I told you about it. And yeah. I was over playing. He said, and he stopped. He was auditioning for us, or we thought. Yeah, <laughs> ended up that he was auditioning us. Like I don't know, but he stopped, and I was over playing and too loud. And looking back on it, but I didn't think that way at the time. And uh, he pulled them, pulled Jeff, and then was playing with Kevin Forster at the time in a room, and then told, him, "Dude, he's gonna have to I can't quit play with playing. this guy. And yeah, he's gonna have to quiet down." Wasn't criticizing my playing, just that I was doing too much and it was too loud, you know. Well, they come back in and said, "Mark is gonna leave, dude, if you don't, if you don't quiet down." And I'm like, anybody, I swear, anybody else, famous or whatever. Would have done that. I would have been like, you know what you could do with it. You know, at the time I was cocky, but I respected Mark so much, and I wanted to play with him so bad that I did that. And uh, he taught me my place. You know, he's not even a drummer, but it, he showed me where my place was just by being that firm with me. And it's like you said, that's he's he's not afraid to do that to anybody. But I don't know of anyone in the world that's uh, more familiar with their instrument than Mark oh, McFeeders. I, I don't either. I mean, but, yeah, that's my number one influence. It's really cool. He dated this girl. I don't even want to mention her name. He dated girls? He, he did. <laughs> he even married one. He does, He's he even been married to one he, for 20 yeah, years. Yeah, no, it's a, another talented, beautiful woman. But go ahead. But he, he dated this gal that I, I knew um, who used to sneak me in to watch you guys play. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was just like floored by this guy. I'm like, this dude can do anything on guitar. It's amazing. He can play any style. And um, when I started writing songs, he was the first person to ever record me.
95, 94, 95, somewhere in there. And just we've always been very, very close. We have a lot of the same interests. He, he outside introduced of music. us to you. Did he? Yeah. yeah. You get. He's like, well, it's my buddy's Jerry Foster. You, you sit in with us, but you, and uh, I can, uh, if I can think about it, you always did Credence. Clearly. Yeah. And I don't think that was your call. I think that was because it was something we could all get together. It was just something everybody knew.